Okay, um, good morning and uh, welcome everyone to our class on prayer and intercession. We'll pray and we'll begin. Uh, Vinay, can you lead us? Mike is here. Lord, thank you for choosing all of us, Lord Jesus. And as we are learning about prayer, help us to pray that is according to your will, O Lord Father. Help us to be aligned with your word. Lord Jesus, we pray for Pastor Nancy as well as she will be teaching, O Lord Father. Lord, pour out your grace and anointing. Let each and every word be a blessing to us, O Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. We've been learning about the right foundation for prayer. So before we get into the next chapter here, which is about the Lord Jesus being our model in prayer, I wanted to ask us, is there anything from whatever we've discussed so far that has helped you in your prayer life? Has anything changed in the way you approach your prayer time, quiet time? Have you started implementing, uh, you know, some, some, um, or let's say a mindset change, right foundation for prayer? Please share with us, even those who are online, feel free. Let's hear from you. How is this helping, whatever we are discussing? Is it helping or not helping? <laughs> I'm not able to make out. OK, yes. Thank God. Somebody said yes. All right. So I'm assuming the implementing of uh, whatever we are learning is happening slowly, maybe. Right? So that's OK, as long as you are using it. So think about what we have discussed and see how our prayer can improve. So the whole point of doing this course is to learn and grow. If we just read through and not apply, there's no point in our discussing about prayer. So please try to incorporate. All right, so let's proceed. We continue now in learning about how our Lord Jesus is a model as far as prayer is concerned. We've said it over and over again that if there was one person who did not need to pray, it would be the Son of God. Because he is the very Son of God. He can just tell the Father and receive whatever he desires. But he prayed. He spent a lot of time in prayer. He dedicated, um, you know, like long hours, difficult hours in prayer. So that shows us that even Jesus respected or honored the design of prayer. There's something there that even the Son of God spent time in prayer. He honored prayer. So we too must honor prayer. Yes, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have God's grace now. You know, we are not under the law. Why should I, why should I, uh, you know, be so strict about incorporating time for prayer in my life? Even if I don't pray, God is gracious to me. God loves me. All that is true. But think about Jesus. If there was one person who could, uh, who could say, I don't need to pray, it would be Jesus. But we see him praying. So if Jesus was praying, we should also be praying. We have to follow his example. When we consider Jesus, when did he pray? How did he pray? We have a few scriptures in our notes. We'll go over them. So the first one is from Matthew, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. We're going to take turns to read it. So be prepared. The mic will be passed and um, you can read. A few of us can read these passages. 
Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. Okay, I want to see some enthusiasm. Don't keep passing the mics. <laughs> you pick it up and you read it. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Amazing. When is it generally daylight? Here in our part of the world, or this city? Roughly when is it daylight? Yeah, maybe 5.45, 6-ish. What does this passage say? When did Jesus wake up? A long while before daylight. Anyone here woken up a long while before daylight for anything? Okay, what was that? These Go to days, the... ma'am, devotion hours. Devotion. <laughs> it's not a long while. It's just a little while before daylight. I'm asking long while before daylight. Anyone? Trip. Okay, yeah. For exams. Study, study exams. Yeah. To, to watch okay. anime. Okay, to watch something exceptional. Yeah, no comments on that. Any other? Huh? That's when, okay, some people here go to sleep uh, around that time. Okay. Any other reasons? Long while before sunlight, we woke up. To talk to some relatives if they are staying outside of India. Yeah, okay. To connect with people in other countries, time zones. Sure. I know some of our African brothers and sisters who are on the call. It's roughly 4 a.m. for them right now, but they're still connected. They wake up early so they can uh, be part of the class and, and get their attendance. Okay, so um, there's a clap going out for all of you. I know you can't uh, hear it. Uh, but yeah, okay, there's someone from the UK. It's also 4 a.m. there. All right, thank you so much for joining. We appreciate your uh, efforts and may God bless you. Uh, how about going to the airport? Yeah, we've all woken up, right? Like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Uh, or to go take a train. We don't want to miss the train, so we do it. But when we put an alarm for prayer, how many of us are successful? It'll ring 4 o'clock, it'll ring 5 o'clock, snooze it, shut it off, go back to sleep. But will we do that if we have to catch the flight? Picnic, Vinay. Will we, will we wake up or go back to sleep? We will wake up. Why? Because it is important. So important. I have to take the flight. I have to go on this picnic. I have to go on this road trip. It's 2 o'clock, so what? Come on, get up, you know, get ready. There's enthusiasm. Can you imagine? This was not a one-off thing. Jesus did it consistently, continuously. It shows his enthusiasm for prayer. So there's something in prayer that Jesus woke, a, woke up a long while before daylight and he spent time with the Father. It also says, departed to a solitary place. That means away from uh, yeah, distractions. So maybe he felt that he needs to go you're far away, maybe, you know, into the wilderness or the woods or somewhere, quiet place. He went and he spent time with the Father because it was precious for Jesus. And that's how Jesus developed his relationship with the Father. You know, we keep saying the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they have a, they have a, a like a relationship of unity. They are in harmony. They are in synchrony. We use a lot of words. But what is this relationship made of? Relationship is to relate. Jesus is relating to the Father through prayer. First thing. First thing in his life. First thing I woke up and I'm spending time with the Father. So that is the importance that Jesus gave to prayer. It's just helping us uh, have a perspective, right? Okay, wonderful. Let's read on. Look at Mark 6, verses 45 to 46 here. Uh, one more person 
quickly grab the mic otherwise someone else will read it if you immediately he made his okay. disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side hmm beth sedia while he sent the multitude away and he and when he had sent them away he departed to the mountain to pray okay uh, prem can you read uh, a few verses before that what comes before that where was jesus mark 6 Mm yeah so feeds the 5000 okay think of this here is jesus some amazing ministry has taken place a supernatural work of multiplying food just happened now if you and i were there we've gone for ministry we've led worship we've preached we've done all kinds of things and people were saved and uh, healings took place deliverances took place what would be our reaction after that go home and sleep okay <laughs> there's one answer to that question go home and sleep we are so tired okay so maybe that's what we're looking forward to a good rest jesus has engaged in powerful ministry supernatural 5000 people were fed with just a few loaves and fish what is he choosing to do let's look at the passage he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to bethsaida while he sent the multitude away so he again is looking for solitude solitude means being alone he says okay disciples you go multitudes please go you know go get your rest and all of that but where is jesus going now was 46 and when he had sent them away he departed to the mountain he departed to the mountain with a clear intention what is the intention to pray to pray after amazing ministry there's something still in the heart of jesus he wants to spend time with the father he wants to relate to the father how does he do it he does it through prayer so he's taking time away going to a place by himself alone to the mountain this time to the mountain because nobody is there he goes to the mountain why very clearly scripture says to pray okay so much we have to learn from jesus isn't it um so yeah there's something very powerful about prayer some revelation that jesus had which we need as well let's move on let's look at the next passage here luke chapter 5 verses 15 to 16 another person please help us read it however the report went around concerning him all the more the and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him and their infirmities so he himself often withdraw into the wilderness and pray Okay. So, now what is happening? Jesus's ministry is gaining popularity. Great multitudes it says. Great multitudes came together to hear. If you and I were ministers and um, hundreds and thousands of people are coming to the meetings that we are conducting. How would our schedule be? So busy. we are trying to organize you know the media the the uh, administration the crowd control so many things the finances we are so busy we have no time for anything else what about jesus jesus is becoming famous and thousands of people are coming there was work to do obviously to in order to minister to these people verse 16 so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed so he has all these places mountain wilderness basically a quiet place now wilderness was probably the place where the crowds will not catch him so he is making sure to create that space with the father so that he can pray so even fame 
popularity, busyness of ministry, it did not stop Jesus from making time for prayer. Unfortunately, for many of us, we become so busy with ministry. We don't have time even for prayer. That's dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. But Jesus had a thriving personal prayer life. That's what we are trying to say with the help of these scriptures. He prayed early in the morning. You know, he um, went away to the mountain and he prayed. He did not worry about you know, his fame or, or any of that. He managed his time well. He went to the wilderness and he prayed. Now let's also look at Luke 6 verse 12. One more verse there. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continue all night in prayer now to God. it came to pass in those days that he went out to went out to the mountain to pray and continue all night in prayer to God. Wow. As if it was not enough to keep making special time for prayer, he goes to the mountain to pray. How long does he choose to pray? It's there in the notes. How long does he choose to pray? Whole night. Whole night. Whole night. Um, so that again tells us that Jesus was passionate about prayer and Jesus wanted to spend as much time as possible with the Father. And in fact, after this, right after this, so this is Luke chapter 6. You know what happened after this? After he spent the whole night in prayer? What comes after that? Sometimes we have to ask questions when we read the passage. He spent the whole night. Why did he spend the whole night in prayer? When we look at the passage, we read that uh, verse 13, when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. So why did Jesus spend the whole night in prayer? Because he was going to make a crucial decision. Decision making, wisdom, guidance, direction. Of God when we are seeking in, we are going to make some crucial decisions in our life what to do what did Jesus do prayed how much did he pray whole night that means a lot a lot so when we want to make decisions we must spend time in prayer seeking the Lord asking him God what is it that you want me to do that's the example that Jesus left for us. So can you see that prayer is a huge part of the life and ministry of Jesus? It is. Again, there is one last scripture. One of us can read that. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Okay, I find this so interesting. Jesus did a miracle and people wanted to take him by force to make him king. So it's like saying, if we are involved in ministry and some amazing miracle takes place, they choose you to be, you know, some government minister or some political leader. They say, okay, tomorrow we'll swear you in. You are going to be the ruler of this state or you are going to be the ruler of this nation. How would you and I feel if everyone was after us to make us the chief supreme leader? We would love it. This is fame. I was waiting for this. Why didn't this happen yesterday? It's happening now. Okay, great. Let's go for it. We would be like that. But think about Jesus. Even fame did not affect him. He was not bothered. Oh, you want to make me king? I'm so sorry, I don't have the time. That's not my agenda. That's not my mandate. It also shows us that Jesus had a very clear focus. Where did he get his clear focus? Because of his strong relationship with the Father. He knew this is not for me. All this fame and you know all these things, I don't need this. 
And so what did he do? He departed again to the mountain by himself alone. People may have told him, Jesus, we'll give you cars, we'll give you, you know, bungalow, we'll give you this, you'll have security, all these amazing things. For some of us, it'll move us. Oh, really? Okay, I'll come with you. But for Jesus, he's least bothered. Because he knew, I came here for my father's, to do my father's will. This is not my father's will. And so, even though people are chasing after him to make him king, that doesn't affect him. He departed, it says. He says, look, that's not my priority. My priority is spending time with my father. Okay, bye, everyone. I'm going. I'm going to be with my father. So, so clear-headed, so focused, so uh, committed to the call of God on his life. And devoted to prayer. Because there's something there, something in prayer that Jesus has understood, he has, uh, you know, enjoyed God's presence. He doesn't want to give up prayer. We'll even see Garden of Gethsemane, huge trial in the life of Jesus. Scriptures say he was sweating blood. That is a sign of incredible anxiety. Incredible anxiety. And someone's sweating blood. But what was Jesus doing at that time? Praying. Praying. So he knew that his connection to the Father was through prayer. And he had invested his life, invested his time in prayer, enjoyed a thriving relationship with God the Father. And that's a lesson for us. He prayed. Prayer, we will see in the upcoming chapters. It has many facets. So prayer is not only asking God for something. Yes, there is a part of our praying where we ask God. But there are many other aspects to prayer. Things like magnifying God, thanking God. So there are all those uh, sides to prayer as well. So when we say Jesus spent time in prayer, it doesn't mean that 24 bar 7 he was asking, asking, asking. He was relating with the Father through all kinds of prayer. And that is how he built his own relationship with the Father. He built his life, we could say. We, he uh, built his ministry on the foundation of a strong prayer life. Was Jesus successful in his prayer life is the question we ask. Of course, we can say he was successful because uh, through the prayer life, he had a good relationship with the Father. How about receiving answers to prayer? Any time, was there a prayer that Jesus prayed and he did not receive a positive reply from God the Father? Yeah, always successful? Yes, was there any time that uh, um, his request was not answered the way he wanted? Only once, Gethsemane, right? When he prayed, he said, uh, Father, take this cup away from me. He tried praying that prayer. But even Jesus knew that that's not the will of God. But the trial was so difficult, uh, it shows the humanness of Jesus that he even prayed a prayer to say, take it away, Lord. But thank God, later he says, but not my will, but yours be done. So that's the only time we see that his request, which he placed, uh, did not really come through. Yes. The question is not about prayer, Pastor, but mm. uh, uh, Jesus prayed before he selected the 12 disciples and mm. he selected Judas also. Okay. So was it a wrong <laughs> decision? Wrong decision. Okay. Hmm. All right. So he selected 12 disciples, uh, one of whom was Judas. So if you go back to Saul's example, I think I, I shared that earlier. When God calls us, he wants us to succeed. Now, of course, God is all knowing. We say that he knows the end from the beginning. So he knew what Judas would do. But what was God's dream for Judas? just like all the other 11, that he will also succeed. See, God is a God. He does not hesitate to give us a chance. 
we don't know why judas made a decision like that what if he did not betray jesus that'll be another story but god gave him the opportunity that's how god works with all of us he knows the choices we are going to make he doesn't force us he doesn't control us but he gives us an opportunity so how do we understand this i'm sure jesus meant well jesus picked him after much prayer it's very unfortunate that judas decided so the will of man is very powerful see even adam and eve god put the tree there the fruit was there he did not he could have put angels to control them or he could have only put one switch no switch and control them god has given man free will it sounds very dangerous like god how can you give man free will but he has and god does not take away free will so judas god selected him with a good heart but judas used his free will to betray jesus that's how we would see it. so god gives all of us a chance yeah good thought there all right so we were asking the question uh, was jesus successful did every prayer get answered we examined the getsemane request but apart from that every time jesus commanded healing or he asked the father something it was fulfilled and that is what we uh, call success in fact at the time when he was um calling out lazarus from the grave luke chapter 11 verse 41 to 42 in verse 42 before the grave of lazarus this is what jesus said he says father i thank you that you have heard me i thank you that you have heard me oh sorry end of 41 now 42 and i know that you always hear me but because of the people who are standing by i said this that they may believe that you sent me so jesus lived such a surrendered life that he he was convinced that the father always heard him um he always answers him he was confident about that but just for the sake of the people you know he went ahead and said this aloud that god hears me that's the confidence with which jesus walked so today you and i can we walk in this kind of a confidence where we say yeah whatever i pray god is hearing it so when we pray um we can pray boldly we don't have to be afraid right uh, so jesus was successful and we are talking about following his example we too should be successful in our prayer and we'll see how we can study from the scriptures on the principles that make our prayer successful okay so jesus was always successful in prayer we as the disciples of jesus i think in the orientation uh, pastor talked about this passage right matthew chapter 10 verses 24 to 25 where it says a disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master okay so you and i as disciples of jesus are you a disciple of jesus yes we are all disciples of jesus when do we call somebody a disciple yeah we should follow we should follow the leader follow the master follow the boss then we are disciples so if you and i are saying that we are disciples of jesus how much of the life example of jesus christ are we following so the first part for us today in this uh, study is the prayer life prayer life of jesus is my prayer life like 
the prayer life of Jesus. Why Matthew 10, we just read there, it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. So as a disciple, I should be like my teacher. Who's our teacher? Jesus is our teacher. For a servant to be like his master. Who is our master? Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ had a strong prayer life. That's the first thing we saw. So whatever we are called to, some of us may be in full-time ministry, we'll be pastors, we'll be prophets, we'll be teachers of God's word, full-time ministry. Some of us, God may call in the marketplace. You know, some of us from here, who knows, we might head up companies, business, uh, we may be in politics, in the area of arts, entertainment, wherever we are. Our life can still follow the pattern that Christ left for us. So all of us can have a strong prayer life. A strong prayer life. That's when we can say, yes, I'm a disciple of Jesus. I pray. I pray. Um, okay, I'm forgetting the name of one person. I'll share about him. Okay, uh, some of you may have watched this movie, Chariots of Fire. Anyone? It's based on the life of a runner, an Olympics runner called Eric Liddle, uh, a Scottish man. He was a devout Christian. And how the date of the actual competition was on a Sunday. On a Sunday. So we all know how important, like if you're an Olympic, Olympics, you're training for the Olympics, you're waiting for that date. When am, when am I going to compete? But because it was on a day of worship, he was willing to give it up. He says, I'm sorry, I can't because I have to worship my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, priorities, priorities. And um, so anyway, the it's a real life story. You can go read it up. But he Though he committed himself for that, you know, God actually helped him win the Olympics. So it happened in his lifetime. Um, and God is faithful when we are so committed to him, so devoted to him. So I'm just trying to tell us, see, some of us may be pastors, leaders in the church. Some of us may be out there in the world. But what are our values and our standards? Even the world is looking at us. As the CEO of the company, you know, if you and I, if we say, uh, I'm sorry, I can't come at that point because I need to worship God. Or it's my time, which I have set apart for prayer. Like Daniel, three times a day, he would go worship God. There is something powerful about it. So you, we don't have to be a full-time minister in order to practice this prayer life. Somewhere we have that mindset, oh, it's only for the pastor. It's only for the you know worship leader. No, it's for everyone, all of us can have a strong and a devoted prayer life, a life of devotion, a life of worship. And we can make time for it. We can commit time for it. OK? So I just wanted to give an example of Eric Little, and you can um, read it up later on. So we need to be like Jesus in our prayer life. The other thing we said was Jesus did not have failure in prayer. So when we pray, we can also learn on how to be successful every time. Every time. There are some principles, of course, from the word which we will see. Like I said last time, right? You can't pray outside the boundaries of God's word and say, God, I asked you, but you never gave me. You know, I prayed, but you never did. Maybe we didn't go by the boundaries that God has for us. But if we learn the principles, 
and pray in line with the principles the way Jesus was successful. Prayer was made, answer was there. Prayer, answer, prayer, answer. We can have a life like that. Okay? We need to grow in it. I'm not saying that after prayer and intercession course, you pass it, oh, you'll have 100% success. We have to develop it. You and I have to develop it. We're all in the process. I'm still in the process. You know, I'm learning. Every time I teach, I learn. And uh, we have to grow in it and keep getting better and better. So we can be like Jesus as far as our prayer life is concerned to receive answers from God. So that's what we are uh, stating here. And God guarantees prayer. We know that we've already said that, you know, our God is a God who hears our prayer. His ears are turned to the cries of the righteous. There are some scriptures here in the second section where it says, God guarantees to answer prayer. I'm not reading through all of them. But we know from the word of God that God answers prayer. Um, maybe we should read it so that it settles in our hearts. Matthew chapter 7, most of us are familiar, verses 7 to 11, where Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Okay, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. It's very positive. He never said, ask and you will not receive. Seek, you will not find. Knock, door will never be open for you. Then why to ask? Why to seek? Why to knock? But what did he say? You will get the answers. Take that step. Ask, seek and knock. Let's look at two more passages. Matthew 21 verse 22. Matthew 21 verse 22. Uh, one of us can please read that and then Mark 11 verse 24. These are foundational verses. Don't ever forget it. Make a note of these verses. Matthew 21, 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, hmm. believing you will receive. Okay. So whatever things you're asking in prayer, believing you will receive. Uh, did you read the full verse? And whatever things you ask in prayer, uh, believing you will receive. Now, when he came into the temple... Okay, the... okay. We can stop there. So, whatever we ask in prayer, we must believe that we receive it. Have we ever prayed not believing to receive? I don't want to show of hands because if we are all honest, every hand will go up. There are times we pray when we don't believe. But that's not the way to pray. Jesus said, look, if you pray believing, you will receive. That's how it is. That's the principle. In God's kingdom, there are principles. If we go by the principle, we see that God actually, um, it really works. So when we pray believing, we receive. Next verse here, Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, the disciple is not above the master teacher, master. nor a servant above his master. Mm. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. Is if, sorry, if, Boaz. Is it uh, Mark eleven? Mark eleven twenty four. Mark eleven twenty four. Huh. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them mm. and you will have them. Okay, so Jesus is saying, whatever you ask, what should we do? Believe. Believe. Believe that you receive them. If we pray without believing, prayer, no faith. Does it work? No, it won't work. He wants to answer, but he's also showing us the way that one must believe and then we will receive it. All right. So God wants to answer our prayer. He wants us to be successful in prayer. Any questions so far? 
okay we are all understanding let's go further so we said jesus was always successful why is it that you and i are not successful we prayed many prayers which probably never worked out why why didn't it work out what are some of the reasons faith the yeah. first reason faith when we prayed for it we didn't have faith so it didn't work okay correct any other reasons why prayer is not working disconnection to god and less connection okay less connection to god there was another answer okay we don't have a consistent life of prayer okay could be could be any other reason who but we should know no when we are asking okay 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 so we don't understand we don't understand what we are asking um and uh, god sees the big picture and therefore we don't get it okay fine any other reason pride okay attitude problem when we have an attitude problem it doesn't work sin. prayer sin yes very obvious answer sin is a hindrance Mm -hmm. we're going against god's uh, will uh then also it doesn't happen okay true that's true lack of patience yeah we feel like giving up very quickly yes yeah but impatience so in that we say we like uh, they birthed a son of the flesh or the work of the flesh whereas god wanted a son of promise but what was the consequence the consequence is quite grave because you know a whole okay we are back we'll just restart from where we stopped so there were different answers coming from all of us um the reason why our prayers don't get answered so there are there are a few listed in the notes as well james says we don't receive when we ask amiss amiss simply means it's not in god's nature to answer a prayer like that remember earlier we said without understanding the redemptive heart of god when we maybe pray something close to cursing someone or something it will not happen it's asking amiss or greed like one of us said attitude if i'm asking with pride greed god is not obligated to answer that we are asking amiss or lust i'm asking based on uh, a wrong heart posture so asking amiss will not give us the answer uh, the wrong kind of prayer will come to the kinds of prayer soon then of course impatience one of us stated that impatience when we don't wait to hear from god and uh, hindrances such as sin 
pride, disobedience, and a wrong understanding of prayer. When we don't have faith, it's prayer is just an option. I'll try this. If it doesn't work, I'll go and plead to God. I'll beg him that, oh God, you do it. But I already have plan A, plan B, plan C. So that's just like, okay, if my efforts don't work, we'll try. Maybe God will help. That's not the way. Or I'll just try, I'll pray. Let's see what happens. Uh, so that, that's not the right attitude. We must pray believing. Remember Matthew 21, 22? Pray believing. Yeah, we are asking because we trust that God will answer. So let's stop here and we will come back, continue with uh, the rest of the session. Thank you.